Good morning, class. Um, yesterday, we worked on simple and compound sentences. Today, you're going to work on simple and complex sentences. So to review, a simple sentence expresses just one thought. The boy ran to the store. Remember we said the boy is the subject, ran to the store is the predicate. There's one subject, one predicate. There's no comma, there's no conjunction. This is a simple sentence. Now, let's talk about complex sentences, okay? Complex sentences add more information starting with words like because, though, before, after, although, while, when, whenever, and once. The boy ran to the store because his mom told him to, okay? So we are using the conjunction because, okay? So we have our simple sentence, the boy ran to the store, but then we're building on to that and we're saying because his mom told him to, all right? So before we begin, figuring out which are simple and which are complex sentences. Let's practice creating some. Okay. So in this box, we have a simple sentence. I will wear a hat. And in parentheses, we have the conjunction until. Okay. So there's two different ways you can use this conjunction to make a complex sentence. So they're gonna show you the two different ways that you can use it, okay? So we're gonna take this simple sentence, I will wear a hat, use the conjunction until and make a compound sentence. So I will wear a hat until it stops raining. Or you could say, until it stops raining, I will wear a hat. There's something else I wanna point out to you about complex sentences and I wanna see if you notice this, okay? Look at your sentence parts of your complex sentence. This is a complex sentence, this is a complex sentence. So the first section I have the subject I and then a predicate will wear a hat, right? And then we have our conjunction until. But look at the second part, it stops raining. What do you notice about that part? When you look at it all by itself, when it's standing all by itself, it stops raining. Hopefully you notice that that is not a complete thought, meaning that is not an independent clause. We talked about how an independent clause is a part of the sentence that could stand alone as a simple sentence. It is a complete sentence all by itself. It stops raining is not a complete sentence. That is not, it is a dependent clause. Okay, so in your videos, you learned that independent clause means that it is a complete thought or a complete sentence and it is able to stand alone on its own. I will wear a hat is an independent clause. It's independent, it doesn't need anybody, it doesn't need any help, it can stand alone on its own. It's a complete sentence. It stops raining. This is a dependent clause. It's dependent because it depends on someone else. It depends on more parts to the sentence. It cannot stand alone, okay? A dependent clause is not a complete thought. It's not a complete sentence. I often tell my students, read this by itself, imagine that you walked into a room full of strangers, said this phrase out loud, it stops raining. Are the people in the room going to know what you're talking about? Or are they gonna look at you with a confused look on your face? It stops raining. They're going to look at you with a confused look on your face because they're waiting for the rest of the information. This is not giving them all of the information. It is not a complete thought. Therefore, it is not a complete sentence. Therefore, it is a dependent clause. It depends 
on this sentence to help it make a complete sentence. So, compound sentences, you have an independent clause plus an independent clause, okay? But a complex sentence can be an independent clause, which is a complete sentence by, it, by itself, plus a dependent clause, which is not a complete thought or a complete sentence. Okay, so that's the difference. Look at this one. Until it stops raining, I will wear a hat. So we already know that I will wear a hat. It has a complete subject and predicate. So it is a complete thought. It is a complete sentence. It is an independent phrase because it can stand by itself. There's our conjunction. Now, look at the other part of the sentence. It stops raining. That is your dependent clause. It cannot stand by itself. So these are some clues to help you identify if it is a complex sentence. All right, moving on. We're going to take these simple sentences and the conjunction, and we're going to turn them into complex sentences. Okay? Here we go. Marcus was packing his backpack. Okay, Marcus was packing his backpack. Backpack, sorry, we're going to use the conjunction while. There's two different ways I can write this. So if I'm going to write it one way and then we'll talk about it and I'll write it, tell you a different way. So I'm going to take the sentence as it is. I'm going to have to write small. Marcus was packing his backpack. This is an independent clause. It's a simple sentence that can stand by itself. Okay. Now I'm going to insert my conjunction while his mother started was starting the car. Oh man, I'm have to go under. Okay, I ran out of room. So Marcus was packing his backpack while his mother was starting the car. So I want you to look at this phrase that we added on. Here's our conjunction. His mother was starting the car, okay? You could also phrase this as while his mother was starting the car, comma, Marcus was packing his backpack. So if I moved it to where the conjunction and my added on phrase was at the beginning, I would just need to put a comma like they did here to then end with my independent clause, okay? If I began with the independent clause, which is what I did here, then I just need my conjunction and I don't need that comma, all right? Let's do another one. They will play a game. There's your simple sentence. We're going to use the conjunction after. So they will play a game. So I don't need to put a comma because I put my independent phrase at the beginning. I'm just going to write my conjunction down after they practice. for 30 minutes. I ran out of room again. Now, after is my conjunction right there. Okay. So they will play a game after they practice for 30 minutes. If I wanted to write this the other way and put my conjunction in my dependent dependent clause at the beginning, then I would need a comma. It would say after they practice for 30 minutes, comma, they will play a game. Let's write number three that way, where we put the um, dependent phrase at the beginning and we put a comma. Here we go. The bear woke up. Okay, so I'm going to put my word in parentheses at the beginning when okay and now we have to come up with what woke the bear up 
when the little girl knocked on the door. Now, I got to put a comma before I put this um, independent phrase down. And this is because I started with that word in parentheses. When the little girl knocked on the door, now I'm going to add that, the bear woke up. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. And I'm going to do another one where we put this word at the beginning and a comma. The children will stay longer at the park is your independent um, clause and your simple sentence. We're going to use the word if. So I'm going to start with if. Okay. So why would the kids get to stay longer at the park? Well, probably if it was nice outside. So let's say if it is nice outside. And this is where I need to put my comma. Okay. And now I'm just going to copy this simple sentence. <clears throat> the children will stay longer at the park. Okay. Now that you have seen some examples of complex sentences, we're going to look at some sentences and we're going to identify if they are simple sentences or if they are complex sentences. Okay, we had looked at these examples earlier. The boy ran to the store is an example of a simple sentence. The boy ran to the store because his mom told him to is a complex sentence. All right, the first one is done for us. Jeremy wants to go to school. Got a subject, Jeremy, predicate, wants to go to school. This is a simple sentence, okay? All right, here we go. Melissa purchased some groceries while she was in town. Okay, so Melissa purchased some groceries. There's subject and predicate. That second line didn't show up. There you go. Okay. While, isn't this one of our clue words? Let's highlight these. We need to remember these. Because, though, before, after, all the while, when, whenever, once. Okay, when we hear those words, that's a signal. This is a complex sentence. So Melissa purchased some groceries. Here's our signal word, while she was in town. So this is a complex sentence. Though Blake is strong, he could not lift his, he could not lift this box. Did you hear a clue word? Though. Though Blake is strong, he could not lift this box. Complex. Frank closed his eyes. I see a subject and a predicate and nothing more. So this is a simple sentence. After they watched the game, they walked back home. I see a clue word, after. And let me show you something. A subject, predicate. Subject, predicate. You can tell just by looking at subjects and predicates that this is a complex sentence, okay? After is your clue word that this is complex and not compound, okay? So complex sentence can do multiple things. It can have an independent clause and a dependent clause. 
It can have an independent clause and an independent clause. Okay, so here's an example of an independent clause and an independent clause. They watched the game, they walked back home. Okay, but if I read this whole phrase on this side, after they watched the game, that's not independent. Okay, that cannot stand by itself. After they watched the game. Everyone in the room is going to go, after they watch the game, what? Because you need to finish your thought. Okay, so this is a complex sentence. Jamie chose his favorite seat because he was first. Okay, there's my clue word because. Here's my independent um, sentence right here. Jamie chose his favorite seat because... He was first. This is complex. Lionel always told jokes. All right, so we've got Lionel. What did Lionel do? He always told jokes. I have a subject, a predicate, and nothing more. So this is simple. The cat sniffed the plate curiously. Let's just slide this up. So I've got a subject, the cat. What did the cat do? Sniff the plate curiously. I have a subject, I have a predicate, I have nothing more. So this is simple. The dog barked whenever he saw another dog. Okay. The dog barked. There's a subject and a predicate right there. And then we have the clue word, whenever he saw another dog. So this is a complex sentence. They loaded the minivan. They, what they do? Loaded the minivan. This is a subject. This is a predicate. There's nothing else. This is a simple sentence. They loaded the minivan with their luggage. Okay, they, what they do? Load the minivan with their luggage. This is a subject, this is a predicate, nothing more, so it's simple. Yes, it's bigger than how they wrote it here, but that's just um, a prepositional phrase to give you more information, okay? They loaded the minivan because they had to leave soon. Subject, predicate, clue, word, because they had to leave soon. You have more subject and predicate. This is a complex sentence. Please remember your clue words. Print off the cheat sheets and posters that I have put in your Schoology folders. Use them to help you with your assignments. Remember, a simple sentence is going to be a subject, a predicate, and nothing more. Okay?